Inland marine insurance. It's a term you may have heard, or it's a type of coverage that's been recommended to you, but you're just not sure what it is or why you need it. In this video, I'll explain what inland marine insurance is, where and how it's used, and who needs it and why. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gordon Coyle, and here I explain everything regarding business insurance to help make you a more informed insurance buyer and decision maker around risk. So let's start off with the term marine insurance. It sounds sort of old fashioned because it is. Marine insurance covers cargo vessels, ships, boats, and cargo carried on those vessels. And it's actually how the insurance business started in the late 1600s. In a coffee shop in London, merchants and ship owners gathered and agreed to trade the risks that their ships faced on their voyages. The name of that coffee shop was Lloyd's and it grew into the vulnerable Lloyd's of London. Okay, enough history. Marine insurance kept its name from that period of time and is intended to cover various risks on vessels and grew to include even aircraft and shipments by air. In the insurance industry, marine insurance is also called wet marine. So what's inland marine? As you may have guessed by now, it's anything that isn't wet. But in keeping with the theme of movement, such as ships, inland marine is intended to ensure things that move or are transported. In fact, you may have heard the term floater policy used as another way of saying inland marine policy. Floater sort of indicates that property moves or floats around. Where will you find inland marine insurance deployed is on things like contractors equipment, such as backhoes, dozers, excavators, and even lawnmowers, photography equipment, television and movie production equipment, computer equipment, especially laptops, trade show exhibits, goods in transit, meaning goods that are on trains or trucks being delivered to a warehouse or its final destination, and goods stored in a non-owned warehouse. But over the years, inland marine has been used to cover items that are either excluded or just don't fit very well in the definition of business personal property we often call contents. Items or classes of property that have high values or unique valuation considerations are often insured on an inland marine policy and include things like medical and scientific equipment like large diagnostic machines like CAT scanners, fine arts and collectibles, solar panels and wind turbines. There's also special classes of property often insured on an inland marine policy form, including Bailey's coverage, where an insured would take possessions to another person's property. Commonly, you'll find this with dry cleaners. Buildings in the course of construction, known as a builder's risk policy, as well as installation floaters, which cover materials or equipment being installed in a building. Radio towers and cell phone antennas. Now this may seem odd because these items certainly don't move, but what does move is the radio transmissions emitted from those antennas. Another weird class of inland marine are bridges because a bridge helps vehicles move. So I've given you a bunch of types of property insured on inland marine policy forms. So now let's talk about why you may need it. First, as I've mentioned, if you own or lease any type of property that moves or has a high value or is unique, an inland marine policy may be a good idea. One of the key advantages of insuring property on an inland marine form over uh, a property or bot policy is that each item insured is usually scheduled, meaning it's itemized on the policy and it has a specific value. So if you've invested $3 million into a diagnostic medical machine or a million dollars in an excavator, you know it's specifically insured for that specific value. If there's a loss, there's no dispute as to the item insured or its value. When it comes to goods in transit by truck or goods stored in warehouses, the goods are not insured on an itemized fashion, but instead on a blanket limit. What's important here is to make sure you update your limits and warehouse locations as your business grows and changes. Who typically needs inland marine insurance? Contractors of all types, home builders, medical practices and medical diagnostic centers, importers and distributors, manufacturers, retailers, dry cleaners, art galleries, and a whole lot of others. How do you get it? That's easy, you contact me. We work with the major insurance companies writing inland marine insurance and I'd be happy to discuss your needs and how to best insure this class of special property. Along the same lines, this video or this video may be helpful. If you're not sure what you need in terms of insurance for your business, or if you're not sure what you have is right, then take a look at this. 
If you'd like to connect and talk about your situation, my contact info is coming up and it's in the description box below. And before you go, can you do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button? Thanks.